And finally, to talk, to go from the big scale, to go from the big scale of government down to what can be done. I'm very keen to emphasize this. There is an enormous amount that can be done in Afghanistan. There is so much opportunity. There's so much room for movement. There's an incredibly dynamic, energetic population determined to improve their lives. A lot of Afghanistan is improving and transforming all the time. And the reason I say this with some confidence is because my experience working in the old city of Kabul since the end of 2005 has been overwhelmingly positive. I don't think there's anywhere else in the world where I would be able to find such a sense of progress, such a sense of optimism. This is a photograph of Murad Khani. Murad Khani is uh, the northern part of the old city of Kabul. And as you'll pick up as you walk around this exhibition, Kabul and the surrounding area, surrounding valley, was a very important trading center at the time when the Emperor Babur visits in the early 16th century, in fact, rules in Kabul in the early 16th century. It was a major trading entrepot bringing cotton in from India, slaves in from India, but also dominating the trading routes that connected through Afghanistan the markets of China with the markets of the Mediterranean and the markets of India. Not very far, in fact, from Murad Khani, 30, 40 miles from Murad Khani at Bagram, they've excavated a civilization which nearly 2,000 years ago, 1,800 years ago, involved cities, houses that included fragments of Alexandrian glass from Egypt, fragments of Chinese lacquer from China, all of this evidence of this incredibly dense skein of connections that made Afghanistan a very cosmopolitan place. Murad Khani itself represents that in some ways because Murad Khani has a lot of the paradoxes and complexities of Afghanistan. It is, for example, a Kizilbash area of Kabul. The Kizilbash, again, originally a Persian ethnic group, Shia, not Sunni, coming over in the 18th century with the predecessors to the Afghan kings settled in this area, but also including four other ethnic groups, Sunni mosques alongside Shia shrines. And as we restore the area, more and more strange aspects of its history emerging. It suffered, like much of Afghanistan. About 50% of the buildings in this area were destroyed during the Civil War period. All these red buildings here on the left-hand side, destroyed during the Civil War period. The buildings themselves are very beautiful. They're adobe uh, buildings with very elaborate wooden screens. And if you look at those wooden screens, you can see Afghanistan's diverse history on the screen. So if you look at the shape of the arch, it seems to evoke the shape, perhaps fancifully, of the Buddhist stupas in Bamiyan. If you look at the carving on the screens, you can see Persian peacocks. You can see elements of geometric design, which reflect a shared Islamic inheritance, which would reflect items that you might see in Syria. But you can also see fragments of European Art Deco design from the early 1920s. It was very, very eroded. Uh, when the minister who's in the audience today and I first went to see the site together at the end of 2005, it looked a little bit like this. The garbage was literally two meters deep in the streets, nearly seven feet deep in the streets. People were climbing over their courtyard walls to get into their houses. It's an area with a, a long history. These are photographs going back to 1900 and maps of the area going back to 1842. But a lot of the buildings have been hit by rockets. Very proud community, but a very poor community. No water supply, no electricity, no sewerage. About one in five children dying before the age of one. Life expectancy under 40. A lot of trades. It was a, a craft area of the city. But a lot of these crafts were beginning to die out. So Ustad Abdul Hadi there on the left-hand side. And there are uh, two gentlemen here in the audience who are from the Kabul Museum. Uh, Ustad Abdul Hadi is a very famous woodworker in Afghanistan. He was trained himself as an apprentice in the 1930s by one of the great uh, craft masters of Afghanistan at that period. He's a master of this particular work, which is called Jali lattice work. He takes very slender slivers of wood, and he fits them into these lattices, which he's doing in that picture. But at the time at which I met him, he had been selling fruit in the market for 15 years, 
and he had no students to whom he could pass on his skills. Ustad Muhammad Arif, who's from the pottery village of Istalif, a 400-year-old unbroken tradition, father to son of ceramics, unable to export because of the very high lead content in the glazes. So these were the kinds of problems that we were dealing with, and we began trying to work on them. This is Murad Khani, and this roughly is what we're trying to do there. The center of the area, in the brown, creating an institute for traditional Afghan arts and architecture to train the next generation of craftswomen and craftsmen in woodwork, calligraphy, ceramics, miniature painting, and now jewelry. The north of the area, the green site, is a residential area where we're restoring ancient houses for the community to live. And around the edge on the riverfront, a commercial strip where we're generating the rental income and the jobs to sustain the area into the future. This is the bazaar of Murad Hani and the central courtyard of our institute and the commercial strip. And central to a lot of the work we do there is working with the community and particularly with men like this. This is Pahlawan Aziz, who is the Wakil Guzar, the sub-district chief of this part of the city. He is a very powerful man. Those of you who speak Farsi will understand that Pahlawan Aziz is not two names, it's a title and a name. Pahlawan meaning he's a wrestler. Uh, like those of you in the audience who are doctors and carry your title in front of your name, he carries the title of wrestler. He won the National Wrestling Championship in 1963 defeating a man called Abdul Haq Kur, Abdul Haq the Blind. And he is the Wakil Guzar of uh, Murad Khani. He's also the sub-district chief of Sharinao, the sub-district chief of Kale Musa, the chairman of the Kizilbash Council, the Mutawali of the Shrine of Abul Fazl. All these titles reflecting a man with a lot of power, religious power, political power, physical power, charismatic power. And a lot of our work in the old city of Kabul involves working through and with a man like this, as it were, wrestling with him day by day. We began our work, uh, as Michael said, by clearing 15,000 cubic meters of garbage out of the old city. That's a before and after shot on the left. As you can see, the garbage so high that people literally were climbing over their walls to get into their houses. This is a good kind of project because it creates near total employment for every unemployed adult male in that part of the city. But it has other unexpected consequences too. More customers come back into the market, the water quality improves, and generally it creates a more pleasant environment in which people live. But again, the secret of this project is not somebody like me. The secret of this project is there in the top right-hand side. This man is engineer Hidayatullah Ahmadzai, an engineer, Hidayatullah, is an Afghan engineer. It is he, not me, who manages a labor force day to day of up to 300 people working on site. It's he who, when the wall of the mosque falls down because we've removed the garbage from behind the wall, which turned out to be holding it up, uh, will negotiate with, and I, I watched this happen. The mullah came out of the mosque. He was understandably a little upset about the situation. Engineer Hidayatullah began talking to him, and as they were disagreeing, and he wanted him to agree, he grabbed his beard and he began nodding his head up and down like this, which I would never want to do. But uh, anyway, he did it, and for some reason the mullah smiled and laughed, and everything was forgotten, and the whole situation moved on, and we've had a very good relationship since. So this is, uh, these personal connections, this form of charisma, his instincts for this community, are vital to the kind of work that we do and the kind of way that we proceed. A drainage, lavatories, paving and leveling the streets. This is Maidan Shah's stone, and we're working with stonemasons to pave the streets. Water supply, repairing buildings, creating new shops for the bazaar. This is quite a simple project. Uh, we have an Afghan-German architect working with us who designed that shop front. It's uh, modeled on the traditional shop front, but it has slightly better storage slightly better security, slightly more attractive.